Wake up, wake up, it's time to rise and sing the praise of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's time to rise, to rise, to sing, to sing, to shout, to shout, to bring him all your heart. He'll do the bigger part, if you will only make a start. Now what good is a lamp without any oil? And what good is a life if we struggle and toil? But I cannot see. What if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleep? Have a great Sabbath, fellow learners in the Sabbath School of God. Today, Faith Fuels Through the Worship at the Doorstep Ministry will be joining you in the study of this week's quarterly lesson. I am your moderator for today, Brother Prose Hintapanan Gonzaga Jr. But let me first introduce the focus topic of this week's lesson. The title of our lesson this week, April 24 to May 1, 2020 is the Bible alone, Sula Scriptura. Our text is found in Hebrews 4, verse 12, and it says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints, of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. This week, our objectives of sharing are, at the end of the Sabbath school sharing, the brethren will be able to, number one, establish the authority of the Bible in the Adventist faith and in the Christian way of thinking in general. Number two, determine how the Bible can stand in the face of doctrinal conflicts and interpretative complications. Number three, analyze the self-interpretative capabilities of the Bible in terms of simplifying or elaborating on its points. Innovations of Congregational Worship Bacolod City Mayor Evelio Leonardia issued Executive Order No. 21, Series of 2020, declaring the city under general community quarantine effective immediately. This declaration strengthens the social distancing advocacy of the city council, thus implementing a ban on congregational assembly of churches to effectively control, if not eliminate, COVID-19 in Bacolod City. In compliance, SDA churches will now reach their congregations via information technology. Friendly reminder, this is a message from the content provider of Faith Fuels, Rose Gonzaga Jr. The content provider of this simple review of the lesson quarterly dissected the material using a layperson's analysis and psychologically anchored logic in order to have an alternative input in the lesson presentation. Thus, there is no claim of theological perfection, but rather a simple and experiential-based communicated learning system. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. When there is hatred, let me sow love. When there is injury, pardon. When there is doubt, faith. When there is despair, hope. When there is darkness, light. And when there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is by giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Now, 
Brothers and sisters, let us have the week's lesson in a nutshell. The character of the Bible inside and outside prove it to be perfect and God-centered. It makes this literature a cut above the world's greatest, while it is shining externally as a classic of all ages and will never deteriorate. Internally, it can prove, interpret, expound, and simplify its own contexts. This is one unique characteristic of a book which in normality we use other references to simplify and interpret another. That is why, with these divine characteristics identified, the Bible cannot be challenged as the authoritative entity in our faith and love to God. Question number one. Why is the Bible the ruling norm of the Adventist faith and what are its characteristics that makes it a divine authority? Here is our viewpoint to question number one. The Bible is a ruling norm. For aside from having God and the Holy Spirit, this is the only tangible item that we can adhere and physical re physically refer our religious facts and inquiries. The Bible as a literature has proven to exist through the ages without being threatened for extinction, meaning it is different from other books. The Bible is a map of faith, as this is the only book that tells us of the past that became the foundation of the present, and the same time, or at the same time, it tells of the present that was predicted and accurately prophesied in the past. That is why, until the future, the Bible is the only literature and book that has authority to tell what should God's people do to face the future effectively. A book with this characteristic is logically considered above humans, and that is in it faith because God entrusted this medium for humans to stay on the course. Question number two. What should be the status of the Bible in the problems of doctrinal interpretation when confronted with conflicts? Here is our viewpoint in question number two. The theory here is very simple. It is just like a solar system. Many of its stars, including its satellite called Moon, gets its light from the great source which is the Sun. Thus, when there is a question of source greatness and accuracy, all the stars and the reflecting satellites will point to the Sun. This is like the Bible. Remember, God inspired people to write the Bible. But our doctrinal instruments and books are just written by learned scholars, which is also based on the Bible. Thus, when conflict arises, the simple explanation is, there is also an interpretative lapse by the uninspired authors to the words of the inspired authors of the Bible. So the point is quite simple. When this happens, Follow the ultimate source because everything came from that adjacent, which is the Bible, the only literature inspired by God through its writers. Question number three. What is the meaning when we say there is unity of scriptures? How does this reality affect our faith as Christians? Here is our viewpoint to question number three. There are two bases of calling the Bible a united scripture. Number one, one is because of its elemental content, meaning the methods, procedures, and steps written in different books that augment each other, 
Thus, taking one or two books away or isolating some books of the Bible will make it half-baked and the point driven will be non-understandable. Number two, the Bible is united because it speaks of a single point in different languages and interpretations. At the same time, in different places and occasions, but the most miraculous one is, is it is even seen in different generations. Thus, the point here is, how can there be similarity and explanative capacity when the book is collectively written by different people of different places and of different generations? Thus, this is now a clear point of unity by means of its divinity. These are the two contexts of Bible as a united scripture. Question number four. What makes the Bible comprehensively understandable to a vast population if compared to novels and great books of today? Here is our viewpoint for question number four. This is another characteristic of the Bible which is not present in other literatures. The Bible is presenting an ideation and that is the love of God. But the way it was delivered, it has some that focuses on the greatly learned scholars. Some are approaching it in the professional way. Some books okay, or parts of the Bible tackled it in a poetic approach. Some books of the Bible makes it in the level of the adolescent and the teenagers. And what is more fascinating is, dear brothers and sisters, some parts of it can even be greatly understood by children. Thus, the question is, comprehensively, are there other books that reaches an audience appropriation of this magnitude? The answer is no. Some books reaches two populations as the best. Because the trend is, always if it is adult, it's only for adult. If it's for children, it is solely for children. But the Bible miraculously combined everything and still came out very sensibly understandable and pointed to all the ages. Question number five. The real norm is, we get another source to interpret a present complicated source. But why will the Bible be effectively interpreted only by the Bible? Here is our viewpoint to question number five. Well, sometimes for a normal book, it is a no-brainer to use another book to refer Two, so that you can understand the first book which you cannot understand. That is very, very practical. This is again exempting the Bible. For in the Bible, if some parts are a bit complicated, you can just get a biblical commentary or for some good Bibles, it has concordances and references, then you can see aligned verses that may also consider the same points but this time given in simple writings and at the same time, it is even referred to illustrations. And that is why it became understandable. Those are all located in one Bible, in one book. This is the very reason why the Bible can explain and simplify its own complication because it is a united scripture. Meaning, some of its parts explained simpler or deeper a specific Part that is being referred to. That is how great the Bible is. Question number six. Is there really a conflict between the writings of Ellen G. White and the biblical facts as this often are subjects of theological falling out? What are the facts here? Here is our viewpoint to question number six. This has been a very long-standing issue in our faith, but what these clashing scholars failed to magnify is the outright admission of Ellen Gold Harmon White 
or commonly called Ellen G. White, God's prophetess writer, that the Bible is the source of her writings and that the Bible is above all other sources of explanations in our faith. This is then very unusual when a primary author already conceded that the thing being opposed to her is really perfect and above everything, including her as the author. So in this context, when there is no resistance from the maker of a certain literature, it is then considered that if ever there are slight complications between the two, it should be referred to the greater light which is the Bible and not to the lesser light which are the writings of Ellen White. However, these are very minute proportions of our teachings and seeing the minute is more of trying to find something that will complicate these two great sources of our faith. Now our duty is to simplify our faith and not to add complications to it. So if, it, if you are part of those complicating it, then you are trying to degrade our faith. Let us simplify it by believing on what our faith through the Bible, is really inflecting. Question number seven. What is the proper way of understanding a verse in the Bible and why is it dangerous to isolate a verse from the biblical wholeness? Here are our viewpoints to question number seven. Reading a text from the Bible will merit Three ways of understanding it. Number one, back read and front read. It would be best if we can read one chapter before and one chapter after if we really want to conceptualize a certain situational point driven by some verses. Failure to do this will isolate the verses and it can have the danger of putting the personal inputs of the interpreter rather than the Bible facts aligned to it. Number two, confirming with biblical referencing and commentaries. This is another way of understanding a point that is by referring to a similar point driven in another biblical book with simplified or wavelength equal presentations. Lastly, number three, it would be nice to see the local color or the cultural norms of the time from other history or biblical books so that you will understand how it was set up and the logic of its presentation. Brothers and sisters, these are the three ways of understanding the Bible. Avoid isolating a verse and giving it your personal viewpoints for in due time, you will even question the Bible because you are carried away by how you interpret verses and not how the Bible wanted it to connect with you. Now, brothers and sisters, let us go to the reflections of the lesson. There are two great reflections in this lesson that we have just concluded. Number one, Bible externally you still have to find a book today that can level or exceed the biblical urgency and need. There is no or there are no other books that survive the ages and its believability and accuracy, which is still 100% like the Bible. Reflection number two. Bible internally, today no other books can accurately, accurately make the Bible easy but the Bible itself. We may use the aid of the Bible commentaries and concordances, but still it will be the Bible that will interpret and simplify itself. This is the greatest uniqueness and mystery of this incomparable divine written material of faith. Once again, this is your moderator, Brother Prose Gonzaga Jr., and this has been Faith Fuel's lesson review in seven questions. It is my great hope and prayer that you have understand the week's lesson in seven questions. Now we are on our sixth quarantine Sabbath. See you again in the seventh quarantine edition 
of faith fuels via the worship at the doorstep ministry of Jervin Eagle Religious Literary Inspirational Productions. Shall we end this lesson review with a prayer? Our Father which art in heaven, Lord, the master teacher, the master figure that can simplify all hard doctrines and hard biblical argumentations. This moment, Lord, we are surrendering ourselves to you. We know that without you, we can never understand your plan for us through the Bible. May it be, Lord, that our divine humility, humility will aid us to finally understand your word and be ready for your soon return. We like to ask all these things in the loving name of the greatest teacher, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless us all, dear brothers and sisters. What if my greatest disappointment or the aching of this life is the revealing of the greatest thirst this world can see?